Hey, it's Mazzy here. Welcome back. And uh, this is going to be a ranking video of my top 10 favorite box sets. I've done several box set related videos. And I'm going to put a link uh, below. One I did early on in on my channel, uh, just kind of going through some uh, outrageous and over the top box sets. And I'll show that. I've done uh, showcases on CD box sets. And and this is one that I've been thinking about for a while. And uh, Patrick, who is uh, someone on YouTube, the Vinyl Archivist, who uh, just does some amazing needle drops uh, of digital of digital versions of analog vinyl records. Great, great transfers. Um, was on a conversation. He kind of mentioned that, and it just reminded me, rekindled the thought for me doing this. Now, here's how I'm going to do it. Ten. To narrow down 10 box sets is a difficult thing. I first, I thought about doing outrageous box sets, beautiful back boss box sets, the best sounding box sets. And maybe I'll do that down the line, but what this is gonna be are, these are the 10 box sets and I am ranking them. Of course, things can shift depending on mood and day of the week. And these are box sets that mean a lot to me, that I play a lot, that I enjoy the music, obviously, prime first and, you know, just right up there. It has got to be the music first. The packaging, the design, the art direction. Uh, these, there are some that I have that are more outrageous and I uh, didn't show something just because it's outrageous and over the top and a lot of parts and pieces. And I am mixing vinyl and compact is for this particular because this is overall these are my favorites today <laughs> so okay without further ado we're going to start with number 10 and number 10 is a box set i think it came out almost 20 years ago maybe more it was uh the centennial edition so if you figure out when duke ellington was born that's when you'll realize when this album came out uh this is an amazing box set. This is, these are compact discs. This is Ellington, the Centennial ed Edition, Duke Ellington, RCA Victor Records. Look at this lovely, lovely package. Just red. And we have the ribbon effect, obviously, to pull the book out. And all these numbered CDs, multiple CDs that fall out. So it's not really logical. It's not an easy thing to pull out. They overlap almost like an origami mosaic package, but they're beautifully designed and curated. I'll just give you a selection of some of them to show you. Love Duke Ellington music. I love his big band. I love his uh, piano playing. I just love pretty much everything about him. And of course, a book set is never really complete unless it has some sort of uh, verbiage, illustrated images. And what these are, the, remember, box sets are archives. Archives of either a particular album, a particular genre, or a particular artist's entire catalog. And I do have a selection of pretty much everything here for the most part. I don't think I have, I don't have any comps of multi-artist comps in this particular showcase, but, um, Duke Ellington, of course, one of the most important artists in jazz, Duke Ellington. Great, great artist and just a fabulous, fantastic, sumptuous collection. Duke Ellington coming in number 10, the centennial year, celebrating his 100th birthday. Coming in at number nine in my box set countdown, is this wonderful deluxe edition of Lovely Creatures, the best of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, 1984 to 2014. There are various configurations. There's a vinyl version that I believe is a three record set, but this is the sort of the full enchilada, the deluxe edition that has this gorgeous, wonderful uh, book about his career, has little parts and pieces. If you see this uh, loosely, a uh, tipped-in photograph. It's actually loose. It's Deanna, and you know the song, Oh, Deanna. He does electric version. He does an acoustic version, big band version of that. Um, there are wonderful 
lyric letters left inside, contracts, all kinds of supporting uh, material that really documents the musical career of uh, the great Australian artist Nick Cave, amongst one of my favorites there. So this is a, a lovely set. Again, this is a compact disc set. The CDs come in another separate little case. Just lovely. So it has CDs and a DVD. So it has some visuals too. So Lovely Creatures, The Best of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, 1984 to 2014, coming in at number nine on my list. Lovely, beautiful slipcase package. Coming in at number eight, I'm including two box sets of the same artist because I couldn't, you'll see why. This is a CD box, The Grateful Dead, and this is The Golden Road, 1965 to 1973. These are the Warner Brothers years of compact disc. Now, there is a Warner Brothers box that doesn't have everything on vinyl. There are a, a Vinyl Me Please uh, box set that came out in the last two years on vinyl, which is an interesting set. Great sounding comp. Problem is for me, it's an odd choice of curation. It's almost like an introduction for the dead. I think to me, the Warner Brothers years has it, and this is where things should be. And this has all the albums they did for Warner Brothers in their own little pocket cases. So obviously you got Anthem of the Sun, Aksamoksua, Live Dead, and so on. So this is out of print. There is a companion volume that has uh, the Grateful Dead and the Arista years. I do not have, but I have those ab albums separately. But what I wanted to show, which really made me uh, include the Dead in my list. Dead has a lot of various kind of box sets of live sets, and 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 that's kind of a one-off. And but this is the one-off box set of live after the fact curated concerts that just to me is amongst my cherished and most beautifully designed box sets. And this is the Pacific Northwest box set. Look at this gorgeous set. The most stunning piece of design art I have in my collection, uh, especially CDs, but vinyl too. Now this contains 1973, 1974 full concerts from Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver, British Columbia. And I bought this on a, uh, for two reasons. One, this came out soon after I moved to the Pacific Northwest to Seattle, and I feel now I'm a part of this, this beautiful uh, place in America. The whole idea of Native American design on the package here is just stunning. The box was designed by Roy Henry Vickers, an amazing first American designer, art director, artist, painter, beautifully inlaid, cut out Native American artwork, North American artwork. Just, just a stunning package. Multi-CDs, including a little sort of a, almost like a bento box with the number, and this is number 14,067 of 15,000. Now, I believe this is still available, and it's it's around $150, give or take, which to me, I think that's a steal for this box set. Now, I suggest, you know, go to the Grateful Dead site, look it up, and I would recommend this in a heartbeat. The music is, is fantastic. The design is fantastic. I think, you know, these are taking a longer time to sell than a lot of the other sets. Maybe people don't know what to do with them or what to put, put them. But it's just, again, um, amongst the most beautiful box sets in my collection. And I think this is a stunning piece of artwork. Really substantial and really lovely. Grateful Dead. Coming in number seven, Johnny Cash Unearthed. Now, this is Cash Unearthed and this is all the leftover parts and pieces 
from the American series of Rick Rubin produced records uh, that he did resuscitating Johnny Cash's career. Those albums are must have for any uh, collector of great music in general. The Johnny Cash records, uh, five volumes, I believe, maybe six. This originally came out in uh, compact disc form as a smaller version and only years later did they put it out as a full box set. There are outtakes, alternate versions, and including sort of a best of disc of those Rick Rubin produced records. It's got this almost antique folio, like old 78 gatefolds that has all these records. It's a multi LP vinyl set. This is obviously also available on, on a compact disc, the way it originally came out. And it's got a really lovely companion book of the text and photographs from these sessions with some of the artists he's worked with. And some recreations of the covers in those albums. Famous photograph by Jim Marshall. So unearthed collaborations with Tom Petty, Nick Cave, Fiona Apple, Joe Strummer. The beautiful rendition uh, on this uh, with Joe Strummer of Redemption Song, the Bob Marley song, that is very, uh, I think it's the same take actually that Joe Strummer uses on his Mescalero's uh, album without Johnny Cash. And they do a wonderful duet of that song. So. This is Johnny Cash, Unearth, uh, a, a recommended one. And this is one of these uh, in the box sets, of Mazzy's favorite box sets that is also available on compact discs. That's vinyl and compact discs. Coming in number six, I said Duke Ellington's one of the most important jazz artists of all time, right alongside of him, right where bebop started, and that's the great Charlie Parker. And this is Charlie Parker, the complete Savoy and Dial studio recordings. Uh, this is an amazing music from 1944 to 1948. You know, so it's not audiophile, but it's great sounding, great performances, incredible collection. This is also available or has been available on vinyl as well as compact discs. And of course, like all the others, you got your wonderful uh, booklet that goes through the various takes, archival material and essays of the great Charlie Parker. An amazing sax player, an amazing musician, an important artist in American music in general, but obviously in jazz. So again, a very, very favorite of mine. Each LP has these lovely basic artistic sleeves. No photographs in these, it's only left to the booklet. But they're very simple, beautifully pressed. Uh, Tons of important musicians on this, including Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis, Max Roach, Errol Garnell, Bud Powell, J.J. Johnson, John Lewis, um, and many more. Uh, just great bebop sessions of the great, one of the most important artists in jazz ever in the history of music, Charlie Parker. We, we just celebrated his 100th anniversary. It would, it would have been his 100th anniversary last year in 2020. So Charlie Parker, love you, Charlie Parker. Coming at number six on my top 10 best box sets. Okay, coming in at number five on my top 10 favorite best box sets, The Kinks. Uh, these are the records that originally came out on Pi in the UK. In America, these were on Reprise Records. These are the mono copies. This is compiled by Andrew Sandoval, cut by Kevin Gray. Now, The Kinks records aren't total audiophile recordings, but it's just, it's great music. It's great rock and roll. So this has all the British issues, the mono versions up through Arthur. Now, I would argue that Arthur is best suited in stereo. Uh, so if you're into this box, this is the one um, to get in stereo as well. I think this isn't, you know, the time when it was that transition period, and it wasn't a lot coming out in, in uh, mono at this point. And I think this is a better uh, stereo album. But it's included here. But of course it has what one would say, many would argue is their best album. The Kinks and the Village Green Preservation Society. It also has a special uh, UK comp 
that is very rare in the original versions of this, otherwise known as the Black Album. And this has um, some, this is very much like Kink Chronicles, if you know that reprise album. It has some best of songs and a few deep cuts in here. It's a double album. And this is pretty much the only way you can get this. And it also has this fabulous uh, booklet compiled by Andrew Sandoval as well. So this box now is, is extremely hard to get. It's rare, it's expensive. And those of you who watch my channel know that the Kinks are one of my top three favorite artists. So the Kinks, the mono box set, the mono collection, coming at number five on my box set list. Coming in at number four, The Pretty Things. One of Jimmy Page's favorite bands. In fact, in the 70s, The Pretty Things were signed to Swan Song Records, the uh, Led Zeppelin's own imprint for Atlantic Records, their own label. Pretty Things had a whole interesting history, which is documented quite a bit in this box set. This came out at a time when the rights to their music came back to the members of the band, which was an amazing set. This is called Bouquets from a Cloudy Sky. They were one of the early, mid-60s blues band alongside of like the Yardbirds, um, John Mayall and the Blues Breakers. And they were, you know, kind of a hard rockin' blues band. They went through a lot of incarnations. In 67, they did uh, SF Sorrow, which many consider the very first opera, rock opera that predates uh, Tommy. And uh, in the early 70s, they had a little bit of a, of a glam style rock and roll sense. Now, this box set is compact yeah. discs. And here's sort of an overview of what's in the set. This is number four for me. And I just, I'm in awe of this set. A lot of this music I, I heard over the years, but I never had all, a lot of their records. There's wonderful artwork in here. There's a whole little envelope of legal papers sort of outlining them getting the rights to their music back, which is kind of a little wild, the whole legal papers and when things were transferred, the copyrights were transferred back uh, to the members of the band. Another lovely ribbon, the requisite ribbon on these kind of uh, box sets and a, and a lovely, lovely um, book that houses the CDs as well as the whole history and archive. Again, the great thing about these box sets are archives. It's all about archiving the music, archiving the history of the band. Pretty Things are a band that a lot of people had forgotten about. Obviously, there probably some of you out there, you know, follow them or into them. But in a way, they be, were kind of a cult band. They were known, they were influenced so many artists, and they should be known even more. And their, their records are fantastic. Again, from garage hard rock and roll to blues-based things to psychedelic to glam, just incredible output of music. And this showcases pretty much everything, their entire career. Now, we also get into here, which is wonderful, more artwork and posters and uh, kind of an overview history of the band chronologically. There is a 10 inch single here. And then of course, all the individual albums in their own cover sleeves. This is a great album, Parachute. This is what, 1970-ish? This is the must-have for anyone who's in a psychedelic pop of the 1960s, SF Sorrow. One of their swan song 70s albums, Freeway Madness. Same with this one. You probably have seen these in the bins, use bins, pick them up. If you like rock and roll, like that 70s rock and roll, pick this stuff up. So The Pretty Things, coming in at number four on my collection, The Pretty Things box set, fantastic band, a band that should be noticed more, a band you should check out if you're 
into rock and roll. If you like Led Zeppelins, if you like the Yardbirds, if you like the Blues Breakers, if you like even a little David Bowie, a little more rock and David Bowie, you know, with Mick Ronson, that period of stuff. Um, just, just great music. The Pretty Things coming in at number four. Okay, coming in at number three, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan has an amazing mono box that came out that goes uh, through his catalog through John Wesley Harding. But I didn't pick that one. I, I love those records. They're important records to me. It's To me, it's, it's an essential box you need to have. It's a white covered box, all analog cuts, still available for about $150. So if you don't have any Dylan or you don't have mono Dylan, you should go get that now before it, it runs out. But for me, this is one of the most Wonderful sets in my collection to me is the cutting edge. And this is the uh, massive limited edition, volume 12. Uh, there was obviously a reduced edition uh, for consumers. This was only sold directly at the time through the Bob Dylan website for $600. $600. $600. I think it's worth like two to three times that now. And it's way out of print. And then after that, several months, they gave everyone to purchase a download of a massive like 100 plus song live output from this period. The Dylan Cutting Edge Collector's Edition. This is 1965 to 1966. Again, compact disc plus, whoa, plus vellum. You always have to have vellum. <laughs> vellum adds, adds to the collectability of these kind of sets. Now, what's interesting about this Unlike, I think, everything I, I chose for the most part here, <clears throat> this is not for everybody. This is only for a Dylan completist, a Dylan fanatic like myself, because this includes virtually every take from the three albums he recorded in 1965 and 1966. So you may get a dozen or more, and you do, versions of Like a Rolling Stone, the progress of that song, how it came to be one of the greatest singles of all time. I mean, Like a Rolling Stone arguably is the greatest single of all time, and from my opinion, and a lot of other people agree with that. It comes with a, uh, a film frame here from Don't Look Back. This is a um, 60 millimeter release print from the film Don't Look Back, and every box set has a different set of frames. Here's a little overview of this. 5,000 copies worldwide. This is number 1679 out of 5,000. More vellum. Vellum. And of course, oh, several books. Mixing Up the Medicine, 1965 to 1966. An incredible time. Um, Blonde on Blonde is my favorite Dylan album. Beautifully curated. Beautifully mastered. Goes through every album. Goes through the recording sessions, essays on the man, on the music. Just an incredible, incredible time in popular music. An incredible time, obviously, in Dylan's in Dylan's uh, career. Huge fan, first generation Dylan fan. More vellum. Another book. Now this has the CDs. So the CDs are housed in slip cases. It goes through each track by track, and the tape boxes. What a gorgeous presentation, right? What a surprise, more vellum. Another book. So these three albums, all recorded within a 15 month period.
these wonderful 45s, picture sleeves, Bob Dylan, 1965-1966. And lastly, in the Dylan box, Leopard Skin Pillbox 45 Adapter. How cool is that? The Rolling Stones Mono Box, coming in number two on my top 10 best box sets. Vinyl box. This also does come uh, in a CD version. Now, beware. There are a lot of bootleg, Russian boots of the Mono Box on compact discs of this Rolling Stone Mono Box. Apparently they sound okay, but buy from a re reputable source. Don't buy the cheapos through eBay and on, even online from third-party sellers. Buy it from someone you know it. There are bootlegs going around of the mono box from Russia, the Rolling Stones. Now, what's great about this box, beautifully curated. Again, the prerequisite uh, book. This one's a soft cover book, you know. Obviously, um, we just lost Charlie Watts, so probably the value of these are going up now. Now, the vinyl is out of print, and it goes for a substantial sum, but it's really a great, great sounding record. And what, what's nice about it, it includes many of the American and UK track listings of several of the albums. So you got configurations of both in, in many cases here. Got one of my favorite covers. Now of the early Rolling Stones records, Aftermath is my favorite. So you got the American con uh, configuration, which is a somewhat different track listing, and you got the UK. Th this record is amongst my favorite Rolling Stones records has the Flowers comp, the 1967 American comp of Flowers, which is, you know, wonderful uh, compilation, including some of the singles like Ruby Tuesday, Have You Seen Your Mother Baby Standing in the Shadows, Let's Spend the Night Together, Lady Jane's, and so on. It does have the mono version of this, which is very different uh, than the stereo version. Unfortunately, it's not the lenticular cover. You can get that on reissues, the lenticular cover and stereo of the anniversary when this came out, the 50th anniversary edition. I think this should have included that. It doesn't, but it sounds fantastic. And if you can get a mono version, it's just a different take on a, a wonderful, wonderful record, which I like. Now, they did include, interesting enough, the original unreleased version of Beggar's Banquet. Um, I think, uh, in a way, the beautiful calligraphy on the released version suits the album better. But this is a fun, uh, <laughs> crazy uh, cover that was not included originally. Uh, my favorite Stone Down, by the way. Uh, this is really lovely. Uh, this is in mono. Now, I think this is obviously also better suited in stereo as better Beggar Banquet for me, but still, these are two great albums and having these mono editions is just a, a nice plus. It's really lovely. Very much like uh, in the Beatles box and several other boxes, they include an extra called Rolling Stones Stray Cats and obviously they mimic the uh, Beggar's Banquet cover art. And this has a lot of songs that weren't leftover albums, single versions, different mixes, uh, sort of versions and songs that have, were on other albums and other tracks or not officially released. Uh, you got the single version of We Love You and Dandelion. We got the single uh, mix of Street Fighting Man and You Can't Always Get What You Want. And so this is kind of another overview. Unlike Past Masters with the Beatles, which is really the, the hit singles. Not all these are hit singles, but it's that extra thing that I think is important. And when you're including an artist's entire catalog. Now, these are the APCO years. Those of you who aren't familiar with that, APCO was Alan Klein's company in 1971, is it? 
they signed to Atlantic Records, and uh, Sticky Fingers was, I believe, the first album put out by the Rolling Stones under their uh, Rolling Stone record imprint for Atlantic Records. And so there are separate box sets of the later years. And I believe there's two volumes that came out uh, of the stereo box set about 12, 15, 12, 14 years ago in vinyl. I believe those are digital cuts, but they actually sound quite good. Uh, they had the tongue logo on one of them. They're black and white. I have those two sets, did not include them here. And you have the later uh, years of uh, Rolling Stone Record Atlantic and then subsequent things beyond when they went to Columbia and they have the uh, separate Abco uh, box set. So this is number two, the Rolling Stones, one of the most, obviously one of the most important bands in the history of rock and roll and uh, a set that I highly recommend. Uh, easy way to get the first half of the Stones catalog. Okay, now it's time for the number one box set. My favorite box set, the number one best box set of my collection. This is on vinyl. And of course, this is my favorite band of all time, the Beatles. And this is the mono box set. Now a little background on this. 2009, they put out the stereo remastered box set from Digital Files. There was, people loved it, came out in CD, came out on vinyl, but there was, some issues. The, in America, the LPs were pressed at Rainbow, an LA-based pressing plant that no longer exists, and there are a lot of pressing issues on those. In the UK, they were pressed at Optimal. So if you find one of those collections and you want to get it, try to get the Optimal US black box and stereo. I think it's fine. I think it sounds really nice. I'm not averse to digital uh, transfers. Sure, we all wish uh, they were analog sourced. In that case, they weren't. I went to a release party for that in San Francisco at a high-end stereo store, and they had a representative there from uh, Capitol Records at the time who was promoting it. And during one of the breaks, I was talking to him, and I was asking about the mono box, because we knew they were doing it. It hadn't been announced yet. And he, had, at that, that evening, said they just got the first test pressings of the mono. So... The Amano was originally going to be digital also, the same way. All this brouhaha came about of the rainbow pressings. People were having issues, having to replace pressings of noise and non-fill on the records and just all kinds of issues. Michael Fremer, who uh, has a blog, Analog Planet, a, a champion of vinyl forever, ever. And he, you know, not single-handedly, but helped the whole vinyl renaissance and he wrote some articles reviewing that and talked to people who were involved in this and what happened apple records the beatles apple brought in several people from sony legacy to consult uh the people i think it's dave berkowitz who uh had worked on the dylan mono box and and the miles davis reissues and for Legacy Records, because Jeff Jones, who runs the Beatles Apple, used to work for Legacy. This is a whole other story, but uh, that's the basic stuff. You can read more about the details elsewhere. So they shelved it. The mono box ended up coming out a year or two, a year after it was originally scheduled. Those test pressings I mentioned were scrapped, and they went back to all the analog tapes. So in a way, we could thank Michael Fremer and several other people that they did it right. And this is the result, the mono box. This was available for over four years, four and a half years for about $350. And I think at one point it dropped down to $275. Of course, this came out on CD. You can get that. Obviously, those aren't analog cuts, but you know that they sound really good if you're a CD person. So... These are all analog cuts. Will it be the last time we have the Beatles in analog cuts? This is way out of print now. This now goes anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 now. It's crazy how expensive this, uh, this box set is. And I've done comparisons with original UK mono pressings, and this, this holds, holds up to them in most cases. Um, plus, it's really hard to get pristine early mono UK pressing. So again, this is their entire catalog except Abbey Road 
and let it be. If you do have this mono box set, you have to get stereo copies of Abbey Road and let it be. That's the only versions there are. This has the entire UK configuration as the Beatles intended. It has this lovely, lovely book. The thing is, the, um, the book in the stereo box actually is better. It's bigger, and this one's slightly different. But it's still such a wonderful uh, companion piece, this hardback book. You kind of look at this and you go, God, Stones had to go paperback? Come on, how, don't cheap out there. Early Cavern Club photographs. And it goes to, the, obviously, all the different albums, each album, track by track. And it's a lovely companion to the box set. And I'm not going to go through every album, but what's great about these, they have tipped-on, actual tipped-on jackets, not just, you know, printed to look like uh, the fold-over jackets that that they originally came out. Everything is pretty faithful to the original versions. Really great reproduction. Um, and the thing is, when this box set came out, all these albums came out individually. So if you didn't want the whole full box set, you could buy these for a long time individually. I think I have four of the individual uh, records. And I think Sgt. Pepper was the first one to go out of print. And that commands you know $200 plus now just for that one record. So uh, if you can find this, if you have it, savor it. It's a lovely, lovely collection. Just a few little details. The White Album, when it first came out in the UK, it was a top loader. And, so, and it had black inner sleeve. So they recreated that faithfully. This is one of the best curated box sets of any artists I know. And of course, the Beatles finally got their due, and this is incredible. We all wish they would do a, a stereo, all analog box set. Who knows if that'll happen? This is my number one box. This is my number one in my collection. I love that I have this box. One of my favorite Beatle albums, probably my favorite Beatle album. But the mono versions are the way the Beatles intended. However, I prefer certain, like I prefer Sgt. Pepper and Stereo, although the other day I listened to a UK original tube cut mono of Sgt. Pepper, and it was friggin' awesome. It was so good. A little noisy is my friend's collection, uh, and I acquired it, and I just blasted that, and it's kick-ass. This sounds almost as good. And of course, it has the past masters. Uh, and what this is, the Mono Masters. The Past Masters is the version, I think, in the stereo box. These are all the mono mixes of the singles and all the singles that weren't on these albums. Some of the songs are duplicated, not many, and they're different versions because obviously the uh, single mixes were different than the album mixes. So this is uh, three LPs. This, I think, is available now. So go to Amazon. I'm serious. This is re available again. I don't think it's a repress. I think they, all, they found additional copies. Grab it, because it's going to be gone soon. That's my top 10 box sets in my collection. I, I could do this with 100 of my favorite box sets. At some point, I may show more. And there's so many kind of box sets that curate one album, or the great series of Bob Dylan's Bootleg series, or the great archive series that Paul McCartney puts out, the archive collection. And they document the life, the times, the musical times with these artists. And it's just incredible. Bowie has box sets um, that are pretty good. I mean, a lot of people like those. And um, I'm a little not sure about the mastering myself, but I have the first two of those. Uh, there are a massive CD collections by Miles Davis, Bob Dylan, uh, Harry Nielsen, Johnny Cash, where it has literally every album they ever put out. So the Johnny Cash literally has every CD in these slip cases, like 60, 70 CDs. And those are massive. That's a different type of scenario. But these are my top 10. List your favorites. Uh, if you disagree with me, that's cool. We all. This is what I like. These are my personal choices in the moment in 2021. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, because... Um, you know, the more people see it, then the more people subscribe, the more we share the love. Mazzy love. Mazzy loves you. I amuse myself sometimes.